Hi, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us this afternoon for a very special live Q&A with director Karen Main and actress Natalia Dyer discussing their new feature film, Yes, God, Yes, which is available now on Netflix. Uh, just to introduce them both really quickly, uh, Yes, God, Yes is Karen's uh, debut feature and it world premiered in competition at South by Southwest in 2019, where it received a special jury prize and was listed in both Deadlines and the Hollywood Reporter's Best of the Fest lists. Yes, God, Yes, the short film premiered as a Vimeo staff pick in 2017, received 2.9 million views. Um, it also won Best Short at the St. Louis Film Festival. Karen co-wrote Obvious Child in 2014, which premiered at Sundance and was distributed by A24, and the short film Obvious Child in 2009. Natalia Dyer is best known for her award-winning role as Nancy Wheeler in the Netflix hit TV series, Stranger Things. She will also appear in the Netflix thriller, Things Heard and Seen. Um, Dyer's other film and TV credits include Tuscaloosa, uh, Dan Gilroy's Velvet Buzzsaw, Mountain Rest, I Believe in Unicorns, which is a phenomenal film if you haven't seen it, uh, and the Hannah Montana movie. A Nashville native, Dyer currently splits her time between New York and Atlanta. Let's welcome up both Natalia Dyer um, and Karen Ming. Hello. Hello. So um, uh, for those of you out there who are watching and don't know, uh, Yes, God, Yes started out as a short. And um, Karen, this is your second short to have become a feature film, which is like every short filmmaker's dream. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, when you made the short, um, how exactly did you go about, first of all, um, bringing on an actor uh, as prolific as Natalia is to be in the short? And then did you envision this already as being something that could be expanded into a feature? Um, yeah, so, I mean, with Obvious Child, it was, um, it was just writing experience for me on both ends of that. Um, and for Yes, God, Yes, um, it always started off as a feature script that I wrote as soon as we were done with Obvious Child. Um, and I had always you know, kind of intended for someone else to direct it because I'd never directed anything. Uh, and finally, thankfully, a, a good friend of mine who I approached to direct it, another director, was like, I'm not going to do this. You do it. It's your story. Um, and I was like, what? I've never directed. Um, but thankfully, um, my two producers, uh, Katie Cordiel and Colleen Hammond, um, who were already attached, uh, were on board with the idea and we decided to make the short film as a proof of concept for me as a director to make the feature. Uh, so it was always intended to be a feature. In fact, I think, I think it's funny when people call the feature version an adaptation. I guess technically it is, but really the short is an adaptation of the feature in some ways. Um, but yeah, uh, Natalia uh, came on board. We were really big fans of hers. One of my aforementioned producers happened to have her email and we just cold emailed her uh, the script. And then we heard back, I think from her, um, her agent or her manager the next day. So it was really just you know, one of those fortuitous kind of uh, stabs uh, in the dark that, that worked out really, really well. Natalia, tell us a little bit about um, coming on board. What was, the, uh, what was that like on your side? Yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely, I guess I got the email, was, it was this summer, I had just finished filming the first season of Stranger Things. Um, and I can like even picture where I was because I, I, it was so like, what's this? Um, I got an email and um, I guess what caught my attention was I had seen and loved, loved Obvious Child. Um, and they, yeah, they, they sent me this script for the short and basically just, you know, kind of asked if you're, if you're interested in it. And again, you know, it isn't the typical way that you usually come across projects. Um, but I, I read it and I loved it and I, I, I just immediately shot it off to my manager. I was like, what do you think? I just got this. I think it's great. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, he totally agreed. So it, yeah, it was, it was a strange, felt sort of serendipitous um, situation, but I, I mean, the writing was just great. Um, and, then, and then talking with Karen and getting to meet Karen, she was obviously 
very cool. Um, her her voice comes through very well in her writing. It's very funny and and vivid. Um, so yeah, it was just it was just something that kind of fell into my lap or my inbox and uh, just made sense very quickly. Um, and it was just a very interesting project um, from the beginning. Um, and then yeah, we shot in New York for it was just a couple days to do the short. Um, and, and 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 Karen had explained to me about the the, the concept of of how it was um, there's a feature length and that this is like a you know proof of concept. So that that was also an interesting journey of getting to do the short and then later getting the longer scripts and seeing how things were filled in um, and what what she, you know she'd added and how how the story um, grew. Um, so yeah, it was it was really I mean it was just felt very fortunate that that uh, we connected. I uh, I. I, when I was watching the short, I had this like weird response to the sound of a modem, which is you know, not something that most people are used to anymore. Um, and I'm curious to know about setting it in that world instead of something more present day. Is that, is that uh, uh, a way of really getting the smartphone out of the equation? I mean, Yes and no. I mean, the, the real reason for why it's set then is because it's based off my own adolescence and that's the age I was at that time. So um, it was really about taking experiences that I had had and, and, and working them into the film. Um, and it's such a unique way to sort of be introduced to sex. <laughs> um, because like the internet back then was you know, it was the internet, it was vast, but it was it was also so narrow in the same ways. I mean, you could get online, but no one really understood what that meant, especially, you know, someone who was, you know, 15 or 16 then, and their parents also had no idea what it meant. So it was just sort of this like, kind of, you know, no holds bar kind of rodeo corral thing. Um, where you just never knew it was going to happen, um, and I liked that aspect of it, and I didn't, I didn't want to lose that um, by setting it um, in a more contemporary time. Uh, also, I think for someone like the character of Alice, the the biggest sort of sense I was trying to get across with her character is that she feels very alone and isolated, um, and I think the internet today obviously can still create those emotions, but I think it's much easier to find like-minded peers or, you know, other people online to tell you like, that's normal, uh, you know, if you're doing that. And I think it was much harder to come by that um, back then. So it was sort of a multitude of reasons, but I think those are probably the, the big ones. There's also something, I don't want to say, uh, charming about like the sort of timidity of the pornography that's sort of shown but I feel like by today's standards you know if something like that were to happen to a teenage girl it would be incredibly lewd uh, and it just sort of reminds me of, of like how simple the early days of the internet were um, I mean I'm sure seeing, even seeing her playing the the uh, the the the, what is it, the BBS, like, um, yeah. hot room game. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there was, there was definitely lewd stuff floating around the internet back then. Um, but, but yeah, you had to sort of go looking for it. Um, I think, yeah, today, obviously, it's much easier to find it. Um, and it's like, you know, it's streaming. Um, so it's, you can, it's literally, you can, it's at your fingertips. Um, but yeah, I feel like with, you know, also with like keeping the, the pornography um, sort of uh, timid um, was just sort of part of sort of honing in on, you know, just how sheltered and innocent she was. That's something that's really not um, at the end of the day that uh, crazy or, you know, illicit. Um, was enough to send her into this like guilt, shame, shame filled spiral. Um, so that's, I mean, that was also part of it. I'm sure if it was any, if it was any more 
um, intense. I think the character would have like just stopped functioning out of guilt and shame, like the level at which she was capable of, of uh, you know, handling, I think was the threshold was quite, quite low. <laughs> Well, so tell us about the journey from the short to the feature. Um, Natalia, were you on board the whole time? Uh, did you, I mean, I'm guessing you have a very busy shooting schedule with Stranger Things. Like what, how did the two of you work together to, to get it from short to feature? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I was, I, after the short, I, I mean, how long was it? Um, but I we expressed, we talked about it and so I was like, I was definitely, you know, interested and, and you know, felt that, that, that there's, there's, I mean, love the story again, like, there's so much to explore with the characters. So I, I was pretty on board. I think the, the, the other side of it, though, I mean, all the, the like, the financing, the technical, like, all the stuff that you were working, you know, I was kind of, um, you know, just like, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, like, you know, um, like, use my name, like, I'm, I'm on board. But I mean, I, I, you know, I was all the real work. I mean, that's, that's, that's what Karen was doing. I had a lot of help. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember with Natalia, like the second that she really like did her first scene, the first line of her first scene in the short, I was like, okay, she's like, we have to find a way to keep her, keep her in for the feature. Um, so we're, yeah, I mean, it's always crazy with you know, everyone's different schedules and stuff, but you know, it was really important to us um, to make that work. So we, we made it work. Um, and yeah, everything else, I mean, it's so funny to like look back on it because it's really, it is really hard. And when you try to like sum it up in a Q and A, it always comes across as like, oh, that sounds easy. Um, and in some ways it was easy, but in other ways it was really, really difficult. Um, I think once the short premiered on Vimeo, we took it to a couple of festivals before then, but it really got attention when it, when it went online. I think it took, it probably took, I think it actually took less than a year to get financing. Um, but I think I met with at least, I was thinking about this the other day for an interview I was doing. I think I met with at least 60 potential like financiers, production companies um, before finding the match that we got with um, Maiden Voyage and RT Features. So it's, <laughs> it's a lot of rejection and a lot of people be like, like basically telling you that, that you know, it's good, but it's not great. Uh, and, and, you know, it's like dating, it really is. And, and it's important that you treat it like that because you don't want to end up with someone that's not a match because that, that will ruin everything really at the end of the day. Uh, so so yeah, it was it was a real hustle, but I had two really good producers at my side, and um, yeah, eventually we were able to to shoot it, and now here we are. <laughs> so you said that the short was an adaptation of the feature. I'm curious how the the feature project might have evolved in the time since the short premiered. Was there anything that you know you sort of went back and took another look at, or? things that your financier thought would be uh, particularly useful to, I mean, what was the, what was the, what were the, the, the time in between for you as a writer? Yeah, um, I'm sure I did things to it, but it's going to be hard for me to remember exactly what I did. Um, I know I was greatly influenced by Natalia and her performance and what she brought to the character. So I'm sure I did like a Natalia pass um, on the feature. Uh, <laughs> But I'm trying to think, like, I'm, I'm sure. I just, I honestly, like, it's such a blur. And, and all those meetings I mentioned, like, people give you notes or say, why don't you look at this? And, so, and sometimes I'd be like, I'm definitely not doing that. But other times I'd be like, oh, that's interesting. And I'm sure those thoughts and ideas made their way in somehow. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the funny thing is I, I was working like the whole time I was writing this feature, um, I was working like 45 hours a week. I had a full time book publishing job um, where I was the publisher of an imprint. So the the any amount of time that I had to write was on the weekends or or in the evenings. And I th you know it was only like nine months. So I don't think it changed that drastically from then to when we when we did the feature. Um, I have to ask because I was born Catholic, uh, but not 
you know, I, I didn't attend a Catholic school. And um, the representation of Catholicism in the school is one thing, but when they get to the camp, it's, uh, it's so um, hard for me to imagine that this actually exists. And I'm curious how much of that was like derived from personal experience. I mean, it's just the kind of thing that I expect from like a, maybe a born again community, but this enthusiasm uh, was just, you know, eye opening. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Catholicism and like enthusiasm uh, or like, you know, zealotness or zealousness, I guess, don't really go together that often. Like, like you're right, like Catholic services are usually quite mundane and, and, and boring. Um, I, like my father actually goes to like, a, in, I wouldn't say it's evangelical, but it's, it's like a more modern Lutheran church now. It has that mega church feel. And it's because he found the Catholic masses boring. Um, so you're, you're, you're totally right. And I think the school and the Catholicism I grew up in was very much like that. But this retreat was this, I mean, looking back on it now, I think it's this insanely manipulative system that uh, like uses secrecy. And again, before the internet was big enough that you could just Google it and figure out what, what happens on it. These kids would come back from this retreat, like super happy, super like Jesus loving, um, like the strongest that relationship has ever been. And you'd be like, what, what was that? Like, what happened? Like, why are you acting so jubilant and, and happy? And we go, oh, we can't tell you, you just have to go and figure it out. So of course, you know, a teenage person is like, okay, yeah, I'm going to go. Um, and it does sort of like slowly strip you down. Like there's a lot of aspects of it that didn't make it into the film, some of which we filmed. And cause it, it kind of made it too dark when we were editing it. It was like, oh my God, this is like, the comedy is just getting sucked right out of it. Um, it because it's really, it, they really sort of uh, take away like social activities unless they involve around like spilling, like telling secrets or traumas and, or listening to other people do the same thing and all these exercises to sort of sort of coerce that or, or encourage that. And then, you know, at the end of it, when you're like broken down, they like, give, they like give you Jesus and you're like begging for anything at that point, you're like, yes. And then you all like hug and sway and it feels really great. Like I had a totally different reaction to it than Alice did. Um, I was like, that's amazing. And it wasn't until a few years later, I like was like, wait a second. Um, so that, the retreat aspect, I think was much more evangelical uh, and modern, but you're right, Catholicism isn't usually, but that retreat is, was started by Jesuits. So it is like, it's, I mean, it's Catholic through and through. So I just, I don't know, it's, it's, it, it's created so many people go on this retreat. Like the amount of people who like Instagram message me just being like, you I went on the retreat you you like wrote my life or like people on Twitter are like I'm getting PTSD because it's so accurate <laughs> so it's funny like some people you know are like that's not how I grew up and I grew up religious but other people are like that's exactly it so I can see that it'd be hard to sort of understand if if you haven't experienced it but I promise you to get back to your question it was all true I think in, up until like the part where she sees the priest masturbate Spoiler alert, uh, everything, pretty much everything happened to me, I'd say. And then the end of the film is quite fictionalized. <laughs> well, that, that's an interesting point because what I love about the film is that it doesn't go to like extremes. Um, for instance, the, the way in which the, the priest's misconduct is, is sort of handled at the end of the film uh, by your character, Natalia, is very, is very gentle. I, you know, it's sort of, it doesn't need to, to go to this like cataclysmic, we're bringing down the retreat kind of place. Um, talk talk a little bit about that tonally. I mean, it's it's first of all, it, it ties into character. You know, it's it's like you're you're learning things. You're not out for revenge with the priest, and also to the writing, it's like the film isn't isn't about that, and and so it sort of allows you to sort of just enjoy that moment you know, without being too judgmental. Yeah, I mean, I think the real reason for that is because it just want to be realistic. Like, this is a girl who's gotten a kernel of like outside knowledge and she's doing something with it, but she's not gonna like burn the school, you know? Like she's, mm -hmm. 
I mean, I, I get that that would be cool, and I'd love to see that movie as well. But um, <laughs> uh, I just I wanted it to feel realistic. Like she still has another like year and a half of high school. She she lives in this community. She doesn't want to ostracize herself, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but she's allowing herself to you know be free on her own time, and you know, uh, and we're left with the knowledge that hopefully one day she'll continue down that that path. So. Yeah, totally. I mean, I just, I didn't want it. I always wanted to feel grounded and realistic. Um, and like, even the comedy that feels like more heightened, like I just, high school, man, like kids say like crazy shit. Like they're so, like I've been watching the new season of Big Mouth and I know that's like, <laughs> but it's true. That's how kids talk. Like, it's just, it's it, the sex and the, the, you know, the outlandish rumors and like, that's just all. That's how it happens. Um, so yeah, like I, I, I always just wanted to feel really grounded and natural and, and realistic. Well, I mean, part of why that works is also like Natalia's expressions throughout from that journey from like naivete to sort of learning things about the world uh, are just priceless. And my favorite is your reaction when you finally get the explanation to toss salad is just like a magnificent moment in this film. Uh, how do you prepare to be surprised when you know what's coming? Good question. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 my face moves a lot um, in life and, and otherwise. So, but, I mean, that's something that I kind of just feels very natural to be the actor that I am. Um, I mean, working with great people, I, I mean, yeah, it's, there's, there's, a, there's always a, a challenge, but I think being, you know, just being in her mind, it's, it's such a funny thing too. It's such a, like that particular phrase was, it's just, there, there, there's so many different things that your mind can come up with in that moment for each of like what that is and what that could be and putting it together. and. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, there, there's a lot of that kind of, inter just a lot of internal sort of um, life with this character. And I mean, then, then there's so there's so much to react to. I mean, the way that it was written and it was just, you know, it's all there. It's, you know, you definitely, as an actor, a lot of times, or at least I do, I always get nervous about um, not doing, not saying, not speaking enough. And you're like, is that, I mean, I, I'll go through my whole journey, but like, did, was that, did, it, did you catch it? Did, it? did it read? Like, could you see with all the little things that were going on there? Um, so I'm, I'm, I mean, and Karen is great now, is, she gives great notes um, and, 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 it, and it is very like hands off, but collaborative. It was really, she calls face a really nice sense of um, trust in my experience with, with her actors. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was just a really fun, script and, and world and mindset to kind of explore the, the, the sense of naivety, I think. So you have, you just, all of these connections are being made in her brain this whole time. Um, and they're contradictory and, you know, they're new or they're, should I be even thinking that kind of thing? Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Was there one particular scene or part of the film that was harder to kind of mentally go? or get get ready for um that was harder i'm trying to think i mean there i mean there's just really silly things that happen i mean like the this like any of the things with Wolfgang, I mean, the arm hair. Oh my God, wait, 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 the, the arm hair. <laughs> the arm hair. Real or fake? <laughs> hmm. What do you think? Yeah, what do you think? I think it's, I think it was fake. It's, it's like, um, it's like longer than the hair on my head. <laughs> then all sorts, there's all different types of arm length hair out there. <laughs> Amazing. It was, it was fake, it was fake. Okay, I didn't say it was fake because it looked fake. I said it was fake because I cannot physically imagine that growing on someone's arm. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, it's fake. Uh... Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Very convincing. No, even for me, it looked really, 
really good. <laughs> it's our American look. So, sorry, so tell us what, uh, about working with Wolfgang. Uh, I mean, Wolfgang was great. I mean, to lit I mean, I you know, you read these characters, you, you read it, um, and you can picture it. But when you, I mean, meeting him, and he's very, and he's very like in care, like he's very good, and was there was said there's a fine line of like, is this Wolfgang or is he in character? Like it was, it was just perfect. His essence just really made that role so good, and he really like went in for it. Um, yeah, he was, he was, he was lovely to work with. He was, um, yeah, and funny. I mean, the whole cast, um, and, you know, there was a pretty like small main cast group of people, but it, it, we just had a great time. Everyone was hilarious. Everyone had a good vibe. Um, we really just got to play together, which is fun. I remember. Uh, I, know, I know that he, his real name is Timothy, but I just call him Jonah Ryan uh, <laughs> for <laughs> the rest of time. Tell, tell us about working with him because I can't imagine it's easy to stay like in character and composed around a guy like that. One of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. Um, yeah, he's, he, he's just constantly the way, like the way his brain thinks and where it goes. And he's also quite dry with it. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we were all, most of us were on the younger side, but he really could just hang hang with the, the, the teen, not teens, 20 somethings. It was really, he was such a gem. And it was, you know, of course he had some very serious um, things to do and say, um, which I mean, I think he did it very, very well. Um, felt very real in it. Um, but then, you know, as soon as the camera stopped, I mean, the blooper reel for with him, I'm, I, I can imagine it was just, it just could have a whole, a whole movie of just him cracking everybody up on set. Yeah. Karen, did you, did you write anything in there specifically for him as a, as a comic? I mean, once, once I knew Tim was going to, be Father Murphy and I talked to him. Uh, I did I don't know if I, I definitely had some thoughts on the character and I definitely did some, some like dialogue tweaks, but just on set, like he would be like, well, what if, what if I said something like this? Or like, like he really wanted to, we, we didn't want the priest to be like as funny as Tim is, you know, that would have shattered all the illusions. Um, but we wanted him to be kind of like a dorky, like, you know, dad humor kind of uh, teacher authority figure. Um, and Tim was just really good at just like coming up with things on the spot and just tossing them in there. Um, I think quite quite a few of his lines are probably just things that he, he, he you know, threw in. Um, but like saying like capiche or something, you know, like, just, you know, trying to be cool while talking about not having sex, you know, that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm curious if this film has been embraced by the Catholic community. There's, well, got, there's got to be some sense of humor, right? Some, I, I, some of them, I guess I shouldn't say no. I mean, there's differing opinions. Um, I'm not gonna remember the name of the publication, but it's, oof. I think it's called Americana or America or something with America in it. Um, I think it's a Jesuit publication and they wrote about the film and said it should serve as like a warning to youth leaders as to how not to uh, teach children because um, it pushes them out away from the Catholic church. And I thought that was really great, um, like a positive uh, response to it. Um, like learn from the mistakes and but there was another one like the Catholic News Service or something who gave it an O for morally offensive. Mm. It's the old legion of decency right? Yeah I mean that one made me really happy I'm not gonna lie I was <laughs> thrilled about that one. Um, I know that we're, we're probably looking at a ton of questions from the audience so I do want to open it up and um, Oh, well, we have a lot from one person. Um, and uh, what I wanna do is invite, um, invite you guys asking questions over one by one so that you can ask your questions live. 
and turn on your video. I do want to make sure that we're sticking uh, as close as possible to the movie. So uh, let's see. Let's start with uh, let's start with Lane. And Lane, I'm going to welcome you over, and then just pick pick maybe one or two of these. Can y'all see me? Hey. Hi. Hi. So, <laughs> so sorry, I'm a huge fan. Um, my question for you would be: Would you ever want to write or direct a movie or short film of your own? Um. Uh. Yeah. I mean, sh short answer would be yes. I. I honestly. I mean, I grew up kind of thinking that maybe I would be a writer in a, in a different way. Like I was thinking. I mean, instead of, not instead of, but alongside an actor, I thought, oh, maybe I'll go into journalism or something. Um, I always liked writing, but I think existing in the film world and kind of working in it, you're like, for me, my mind, the way it starts to tell stories now, I think is in that kind of format. Um, so I, that it is something I'd want to do, but I, you know, I think it's about finding something that you want to say, or it's a story that you want to share but yeah yeah i think so um who knows who knows good question lane feel free to pick another oh okay oh, um let's see um was there any scenes from the movie that got deleted that y'all wish had made the final cut uh mm -hmm. I'm gonna say no, <laughs> um, but there's a lot of scenes that like I love and I miss that you know are on the deleted scenes. Um, uh, I think if you buy it on iTunes, yeah, I saw. Yeah, um, <laughs> there's a great one where like all the other characters are giving speeches and they were so talented and wonderful, um, and I felt horrible having to cut it, um, but it was a pacing issue. But they were so phenomenal and talented. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna welcome over. Um, Hi, Lane. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna welcome over Julia next, and then I'll put a running order so that you guys can prepare that I'm gonna, you know, bring you on as panelists. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you both. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to do this today. Um, I grew up Catholic and I cackled through this entire movie uh, because it was just 100% accurate. Um, my question was for you, Karen. I was curious um, what it's like to, if you had any reservations about writing a story that was so personal and about your own experience. Um, and if you did kind of how you either overcame that or decided to go through with the story anyway. Well, that's a great question. Um, because the story was very much just about uh, sort of a version of me when she was younger and it didn't really affect, it wasn't really about anyone in my family. Um, she does have parents in the film, but they're, they're not really based on my parents and they're very small characters. Um, I didn't have any reservations because it was just my life and I felt I could do what, with that what I wanted. Um, and yeah, so I didn't, I think, I think it is difficult though, when you are using, um, your own sort of life and existence in any, in any sense, when you're, when you're writing about it, I will say when we were shooting some of the retreat scenes, I'd sort of like stop in between takes and like, look around at, you know, the, the set and the design and the wardrobe. And I, I got a little freaked out. I like had a little bit of PTSD. So I was like, I'm reliving this experience. Um, but then I ultimately realized that that was great. And it meant that everybody was doing a really good job. Uh, I felt that way, so. Awesome, fantastic, thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me go out to Joel. Hello, is it working now? Okay, yeah. Um, 
I was wondering what the hardest scene for you guys to shoot was and why, and if you guys had any like major problems during production or pre-production, uh, how you guys overcame those. The hardest scene to shoot. God, that's such a good question. It's like the dog was kind of annoying. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, I just remember the dog wasn't doing what we wanted her to do a lot. Um, what else was there? The motorcycle scene was, I don't think it was hard, but it was cool because we had a stunt coordinator and, and she was awesome. Um, I can't, was there any, can you remember any difficult ones in Salia? I can't. I yeah. Can't uh, I mean, you know, I guess there's things to, I mean, I know there's a, that one day that we filmed all like eating the food in the kitchen and it was just whew, sugar rush. Um, also, uh, like a huge scoop of really cold ice cream in your mouth, I remember. Sorry. I mean, yeah, there's, and there's things like, um, I mean, the shooting with Francesca, that one scene with the baby that we just couldn't stop laughing. Um, so I think that's those kind of performance things I think are yeah but like technically I don't know um I'm trying to think yeah, if there's any specific yeah I can't think of anything that was crazy hard um it was a very it was a very simple sort of shoot with like very simple locations um I think probably the hardest thing wouldn't be a specific scene but just shooting everything in 16 days and days where we had like big you know location moves in the middle of the day and, and stuff like that um is probably what was most difficult uh and in terms of like encountering problems i mean honestly like y the, y yeah it always happens in any production um and you just you're so like you can't really stop and like consider how to fix it you just have to fix it and keep going um, so when you look back on it, they don't really stand out because you just have to keep sort of grinding through it. Um, I can't remember, this isn't really something that happened on set, but I, I would recommend to anyone to not put any of your characters in a real leather jacket uh, because it's like that SNL skit from like the 90s where like Horatio Sands is just like in all the leather and it's like creaking. <laughs> it was a sound design nightmare. Um, so pleather is your friend and to the animals and to the films. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. The movie was great, by the way. So um, okay, let's bring over Haley. Thanks, Joel. Oh my goodness, hello. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. I'm a huge fan. Um, my question is just um, was it uncomfortable playing this role like of something that's like so taboo to like talk about? Um, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, like when I got like the script, it, it was, you know, you kind of by agreeing, you're like, this is something that I, I want to do. You know, I want to like, <laughs> yeah, there's the, the, the good thing, what made it nice and what attracted me to it was that um, just her naivety. Like, again, I, I talk about, I've talked about, um, a lot when I'm talking about this film because I think it's so important that you know I mean you know you, you read characters all the time and a lot of times if you're playing teenagers there's some sort of you know um sexy type of scene but I feel like most of the ones that I encounter are, can at least have the pressure of potentially feeling like they have to be performative or look a certain way and I think the beautiful thing about Alice is that so she just had no idea she just knew like was kind of following so it just it, it gave a lot of room for it to feel just very natural and curious and exploratory and and uh you know I get you know and also not just trying not to think about it too much before <laughs> filming it or uh, at any point but it really was it was a lot easier um coming at it from that direction I think for me thank you so much it's really nice to talk to you <laughs> yeah, no, thank you good great question Hi, Haley. Um, bringing over Jacqueline. Oh, so Jacqueline's not popping up with a microphone or a camera. So I'll give her a moment to, to work on that and bring over Eve in the meantime.
Hi. <laughs> uh, so surprise, I'm next. Um, my question was about the short film. Oh, am I next or somebody else coming? Well, well, yeah, absolutely. Go for it. And then we'll okay. back on this. Okay, cool. Um, so my question was about the short film and uh, one was the, the very practical question of if we wanted to watch that now, uh, where can we find it? And then the uh, second part of the question was because you had written the feature first and then uh, and then turned it into a short, how did you do that? Did you pull like a section or a, a couple of scenes from the from the feature or did you kind of like summarize and condense or did you have a different thought process and approach um, it, as to like how you wanted to represent this character and story in a shorter length? Yeah, I definitely, I think condensed and shortened. Um, I picked a few scenes uh, that I wanted um, to be in it. And then I wrote a few that were kind of missing around it and wrote a new ending, obviously, because the ending, you know, we wouldn't have time to get there. Um, and yeah, it was, it, I, that's kind of what I did. Um, there are a couple scenes in there that, that don't exist in the feature, but you'll see when you watch it that there are some that are almost identical. Um, and I really didn't think the short, I'm, I'm super happy that the short was very successful and a lot of people watched it, uh, but there's some similarity. And how can you watch it? Um, I think it's on the iTunes specials as well. As oh, if, okay, cool. Cause I just I, tried Vimeo a minute ago. It wasn't there, but iTunes I'll look. You know, it, it, I, I watched it on YouTube, I think. Um, so no? Just to be there. I mean, oh, you can Okay, it. well then I won't put the link <laughs> to that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, it, it is there, but also buy the film. <laughs> Great. Only if you can afford it. Otherwise just watch it on YouTube, I don't care. Awesome, thank you so much. And I enjoyed the film. Thank you so much, Eve. Okay, Jacqueline, you're up. Thank you, sorry, Zoom hates me. I don't know what happened. Um, I absolutely loved this film and it reminded me of one of my favorite movies, Saved. And I was wondering if you can talk a little bit about like what some of your influences were when you were making the movie. Uh, yeah, I, I get asked that a lot and I always like freeze up because there, there's so many, but then I like, I just get like, can't remember them and I forget them. Um, but really like, yeah, I've, I've seen Saved like when it came out, I love Saved, I love But I'm a Cheerleader, which is another film that this gets compared to a lot. Um, but yeah, really just a lot of films about young women sort of acting in a way that I could recognize in myself either now or, or as a, young, a younger version of myself. Um, Marielle Heller's film, uh, Diary of a Teenage Girl was amazing. Um, I think there's a, a French woman whose name I always forget because I'm terrible in French. Denise Ergen Goom, Goom, uh, it's called Mustang. Um, it's about, yeah, you guys know. That's a, yeah, it's an amazing film about five like Turkish sisters um, and they grow up really like repressed um, and it, it has a happy ending, but it's a beautiful film. Um, Selena Scama's Girlhood, like all those types of stuff. Um, even though like, you know, at the edge of 17, I think is a brilliant like coming of age film that's come out recently that just shows, you know, young women being complex and, and interesting and, you know, not just, you know, trying to have sex, um, which I think a lot of, you know, coming of age films usually focus on. Um, but also I think I was influenced by like the sort of male films, not in a way that like I was emulating them, but I guess in some ways I was, I was trying to make a female version of like, maybe not like, you know, blueprint copy of American Pie, but like that or like the squid and the whale and films that are, you know, largely about male, teenage male, you know, sexual expression that I found myself relating to as a woman. And I was like, where, where are our films? So it was really an amalgam, amalgam of several types of many, many wildly different films. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's go over to uh, Danny Parker.
Hi. Can you see me? Yes. <laughs> Awkward Zoom start. This question's for Karen. Um, I, I love this film and I'm a huge fan of Obvious Child. That's become like one of my favorite films in the past few years. Um, so thank you for that. Um, this is something that I feel like is so natural and you just achieved such a grounded dramedy here. Um, can you talk a little bit about the process of working with your cast and especially in only having 16 days um, about rehearsals and conversations that went into this ahead of time? I know you talked about, um, about the cast influencing different versions of the script, but I'd love to hear more. Yeah, I mean, we didn't have a lot of time. I mean, thankfully, you know, I, I worked with Natalia before, which always helps. Um, but, but everybody else I'd never worked with. Um, and we didn't really have time to rehearse. Um, I didn't even think we did a read through, which is crazy. We didn't do like a table read. Um, so yeah, it was really, it, it, what it really boiled down to, I think is, um, having an incredibly talented cast who, who thankfully got along. So also just genuinely good people um, who were obviously there because they were excited about the project, which meant they were ready to work hard. Um, and being, from my perspective, just being really, really prepared. Um, I, I tend to do like very thorough script analysis, even when it's my own scripts um, before we shoot and making sure I know what every scene's about, what every character's through line is, like, you know, really boring stuff that you, you might not always use on the day, but if you need it, it's there. And also like you've gone through it, so it's in your head. And I also like to plan out like, you know, pretty much line by line if I can, um, different ideas or adjustments or, you know, notes that I might give to the actors if, if I'm not getting the, the read or the, the, the performance I want. Um, so that, you know, I don't spend time on the day like going, hmm, um, that I can just like get in there and, and, and we can do it. So it really was, a, I think, you know, like it's sort of like survival, like you fight or flight thing, you know, like when you're in there, you just put, put your game face on and, and, and just go for it. Um, you do, there's really not a lot of time to think. Um, but yeah, I, I really think it just boils down to all those things is, is really having a talented cast and then being in a talented crew and being really, really prepared um, to do something that quickly. It's, it's a marathon, but it's, it's fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's take three last questions. We'll do Steven, Alan, and Diana. So we'll start with Steven. Audio. Hello. Uh, like everyone else. Hi, I, I very much enjoyed it. Um, I love the touch and I think an interesting double bill would uh, be your film uh, with uh, the documentary Jesus Camp. I mean, you'd have flip, even though Jesus Camp really isn't about, you know, uh, sex, uh, still having, you know, a, a camp like that uh, with yours would be very interesting. Um, a couple of questions for each of you. Uh, first of all, um, uh, uh, Natalia, uh, I'm sure you've been asked about the, the scene with the broom in the kitchen. What I wanna know is how many takes did it take you to do that and not crack up every time? Yeah, I, but yeah, that one was, I, I, I mainly remember like, kind of like talking through this, like, and this is what we're gonna do. And then I think I did one thing with the mop and then, and Karen was like, is that how you do it? Like, cause I would do it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, no, okay. Yeah, so there's, there's some technical discussions about, uh, about it, but yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of those kind of scenes where you, you have to like, you just like get it out. Like, you know, how- you Did the crew it. crack up afterwards? I can't imagine they, they didn't bust up afterwards. Generally, pretty respectful. I don't know. I, okay. I, I don't know what. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of those kind of moments where you just you just you do just it. Step back and it's like, oh wow. Um, 
yeah, that one, that one, that one definitely stands out in my mind. Uh, uh, Karen, uh, this is kind of a, a film business uh, question. Uh, dealing with uh, Netflix, uh, how do you go about, how did you go about doing that? Uh, did you have to make the contact, your producers, and what kind of a business model do they work with you? I mean, is it, do they give you a lump sum? Do they do, they do like YouTube? Do they count viewers? And, and I uh, don't have the answer to any of those questions, unfortunately. I, we, we sold the film to a distributor who has a relationship with Netflix and, you know, Apple and iTunes and all those sorts of things. So they, they dealt with that. Um, I also think Netflix is notoriously known for not sharing its numbers ah. publicly or even with, I think, um, you know, the distributors who, who, who sell them their films. Um, I think, you know, they have that like top 10 list or whatever. And sometimes they're like, we'll say they're big shows, like what the numbers broke, but I think they're notoriously very quiet about those sorts of things. So I, I will never know, I'm afraid, how many people watch it. But, but your distributor isn't keeping in contact with you and whether they give a lump sum that comes back to you or they're gonna, they're gonna dish it out depending upon viewers. They haven't been in contact with you on that yet. I'm sure that they've been in touch with my producers, but I don't have the specifics on hand. Okay. All right. Well, I enjoyed it and uh, good luck. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you, Thank you. Steve. Um, okay, let's go out to Alan. Also, uh, while, while Alan's coming on, I realized how I saw the short was by going to YouTube putting in the short, getting a trailer to the short, then in the comments, someone was like, how do I watch the whole thing? And then someone posted a link. So if anyone's trying to find it, wait, so the short is available if you purchase the movie. Is it, I, I, don't, I don't wanna take money out of people's pockets, I'm just curious. If you purchase the movie on iTunes, you get a bunch of cool deleted scenes, okay. a blooper reel, and and um, the short film. Okay. Alan. Hello. Oh my gosh. Hi. Um, well, my first question is for Karen. Um, my question is, what was the motivation to write about an experience like Kairos? Because I know it's called Kirkos in the in the movie, but like, why Kairos? And the reason I ask is because I went to a Catholic high school. I just graduated. I go to USC now, and. Um, all my friends who went on Kairos like loved this movie. Like we were all like, it's so relatable. And it just had so many things about going to Catholic school and just like, like the little, little stuff about that you hear. So like, that's my question. Like, what was the motivation? Well, I love that like it, well, I also hate it in some ways, but I love that like <laughs> someone who just graduated from Catholic high school can still relate to it. But I also was like, oh, maybe I hate that. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you and your friends like the film. Like, I, I mean, that's that's who I made it for. Um, yeah, I, I, I wrote about it because I, like I was saying earlier, like I, I looked back on it as, as, you know, a few years later and realized that it was kind of manipulative and just a really interesting experience that, well, what really happened is I actually wrote a, an essay about it at college. I went to school in New York City. Um, and so I had classmates from all over the country and when I read it or when they read it, they were like, well, that's insane. Yeah. Oh, maybe there's, maybe there's something interesting there um, that I can write about. So that's really how it came about. And it's really fascinating how many people, you know, have opened up and, and went on, like it, it still happens, obviously it still happens today. Like I'm sure millions of people have been on it. The way we look at it now is that, like Kairos is an experience like it's like a bandage at the end of your four years for us because we did it as seniors and it's like after we're in college and we're looking back at to what really happened we're just like wow that was kind of messed up like we weren't yeah. sleeping like it was just like so I love the movie I was like oh my gosh it's like it's like it's getting it from like a, a different perspective when you're not the person in the retreat right yeah and, um my other question is for Natalia how how was playing uh that you're the main character, you know, like, I know it was like, there was some uncomfortable things to do, right? Yeah, like, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, it was, 
it, it was fun. It was definitely a lot of um, work, I guess. I remember like just a lot of waking up in the dark and, and uh, <laughs> because, you know, shot it quite quickly. So it was pretty intense. Um, it, yeah, it was, you know, it, it, it was great. I think a lot, a lot of my experience with it really comes down to um, working with Karen and, and de developing a sort of just trust um in in her as a director and in your crew and the people that you're working with um so to be honest i mean uh, it really was um like there's there's daunting th things about um some of the scenes uh but it was it was always just handled i mean i i tried to approach it like just very um genuinely uh you know not not try to do anything too crazy but then everyone around was just very um great like the vibe was very good I, I never really felt I mean sometimes you feel silly um but I think that was the point you know that it, it is silly um but yeah it, it really worked out well I, there's there's a lot of versions of this kind of uh, of, of these kind of scenes that could go wrong and not feel good but it always felt very um good so yeah Thank you. Thank you for answering my questions, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ellen. Thanks, Ellen. Uh, bringing over Diana for the last question. Hey. Oh, hey. Hi there. Hey, thank you. I'm such a huge fan. I loved the short film and loved the, um, the feature film. I just uh, had a, a quick question. I saw that a big thing featured in this movie is Alice using AOL chat rooms. Did you guys have any interactions with early forms of social media growing up, such as AOL, MySpace, anything like that? I think you know the answer. <laughs> big yes. yes. For <laughs> Natalia, I think it's more uh, interesting. I don't know. I do, I mean, I... I think I, I was born in 95. So it was like the, the internet was just kicking off. I didn't really do AOL. I mean, a lot of my young internet life was playing like mini golf or like just games like computer. I did MySpace was the first thing I did. I remember I had MySpace. And just, so was, I wish I could find it. Um, uh, does that still exist? Does MySpace still exist? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's a good question. Hmm. Um, and then Facebook. Uh, but no, I didn't, I didn't really do the, the chat rooms here. I mean, I had friends who did it. Um, that wasn't my my thing on the internet. Um, yeah, and I, I'm a huge fan of you, Natalia. And there's a question I've always wanted to ask you uh, ever since season one of Stranger Things, but I saw you're really into astrology. Would you mind sharing what your rising sign is? I've been dying to know. I know you're you know, a Capricorn sun, Gemini moon, but do you know what your rising sign is? Leo. Um, oh, awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> I have an Aquarius rising sign. Oh, Small awesome. world. Thank um, you. Yeah. <laughs> it's so nice to meet you. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dana. Um, oh, wow. Thank you all. Thank you both so much for, for spending this hour with us. Um, clearly, it meant a lot to, to our students. And it's such a great way for us to wrap up for the fall semester and take a break, recharge, and get back into some virtual education in January. Um, so best of luck. I hope we can you know, bring your next films to campus and actually put them up on the big screen. Um, but in the meantime, we will keep our Netflix and drive-ins uh, very active uh, as we get through the next couple of months. And uh, best wishes for the holiday season. Likewise. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.